In the 21st century, there's no escaping the cult of celebrity. This old woman in Sainsbury's turned around and said, I knew it was you. I recognised your breathing. Idolised by adoring fans. There's nothing more fun than being famous. Celebs enjoy living in the lap of luxury. I feel like my eyelashes are coming off. Oh, no, they're not. I want to find out what happens when they're stripped of the trappings of fame. I've always got a fresh mani-pedi. People might think, oh, she doesn't want to get her hands dirty, but I will. And left to fend for themselves. Is this a good idea? I don't know if I want to do this, you know. <laughs> for the next four weeks, I'm abandoning ten celebrities. 8,000 miles from home on a remote Pacific island. With just the clothes on their back. I mean, you don't know you've lived until you've shit in the sea and then swim away from it. And a few basic tools. Anthony, come on! I'm going for the big stuff. I'm going for the crocodiles. They'll only eat what they can catch and kill. How is this happening when we're top left? I think I'm going to die on this island. <laughs> Quick, she's trapped. Ah! Here's your knife. Pitted against the forces of nature. It's a knife injury. It looks like this is in my finger. As tropical storm season rages around them. Montana's got swimming goggles to protect her eyelashes. They've got to be protected. Going great. Oh, wow. Gnarly, dude. Welcome to the fire. <laughs> yeah! Is that a rubber Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting away. We're dead and this is a dream. Stop talking. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Pushed to the limits of human endurance. <laughs> do you think I want to be in this position? Who will have the grit and determination to survive? Sixteen days ago, I marooned ten celebrities on a remote island in the Pacific. The extreme environment has pushed the camp to breaking point. I'm not doing things when you ask me like that. Exhausted and on the brink of starvation... It's really tough. Montana became the third celebrity to throw in the towel and quit. I feel really physically weak and I feel really mentally weak and all I want to do is leave. While island conditions left Hollywood actor Eric needing urgent medical attention. You need to see a specialist. When are we doing this? Today. Oh, now? But with camp morale at its lowest, the group's eldest member made a triumphant return. Eric, back! Oh, amazing. I'm so glad I'm back. Oh, my eyes are okay, by the way. <laughs> Feeling, Eric? I feel okay. How do you feel, baby? Yeah, I'm fine. The seven remaining celebrities have now been on the island for just over two weeks. In the distance, Martin Kemp's naked, gone for a quick skinny dip. There must be millions of housewives who would give anything to be in my position right now. Over there, yeah, that's Kempy. His pants are down. Having a little skinny dip. We all feel ugly, we all feel dirty. I haven't looked at myself in the mirror for so long. Universe, give me a toothbrush and some Colgate, please. We all smell bad. I desperately need a wash in the sea, desperately. What's that there, look? Bum bum. I want to try to recreate that iconic scene where Marley in class is under the waterfall on I'm a celebrity. I'm like a whole flock of fans off the back of it. I'm trying to get the willy in. Right, fish boy. Fish man, fish man. Looking pretty choppy out there, isn't it? Since they found a washed up net six days ago, the camp has been relying on fish as their main source of food. Fingers crossed. With limited success. And today is no exception. Well, yeah. But you've, you've still graduated again. Oh, 
You're like now the Obi-Wan of fishing, not just fish man. Pete is fantastic. I can trust Pete in any situation we've been in. The polar ends of the social spectrum we shouldn't get on, but actually, we're both very different from those perceptions. Like most things in my life, when you've got big hands, things look smaller when you hold them. So actually, this is a massive fish. It's just I've got big hands. I've got little hands. And it's still a little fish. <laughs> my best friend on the island, got to be crackers. I think he's a great guy. I really, really do think I, I couldn't fool him. It's just a nice geezer. He's a real nice geezer. So there's been a bit of love on the island, and it's been between Mr James Cracknell and Pete Wicks, which is really sweet, and it's funny because you wouldn't, like, put them two together. I mean, they're already talking about getting matching tattoos. And the other day, us two were chatting, having a conversation between the three of us, and I felt like a gooseberry, just sitting there, like, they're talking, like, private jokes. I'm like, not wanted. Yeah, a like, proper bromance going on. Oh my God, guys, there's a pig! Right down the end. Wow, that is far out. Where is it? There. It's the end there. Where? It's, oh, it's on the beach. I don't see it. Right, right in the corner. Looks really Oh yeah, he's black. Yeah. It's a big black pig. He weighs more than 50 pounds, guys. Yeah. I wouldn't want to take him down. No, he's a big one. Wow. That's a lot of bacon. There's a pig on the beach. Yeah. Well, right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not touching it, obviously. A week ago, pescatarian Pete persuaded the rest of the group to survive on fish alone. But the group haven't had a decent catch for three days. I don't think it needs to be eaten because I think we've got protein, but we don't have a yucca and things like that. That's my view. If you want to kill it and eat it, kill it and eat it. I won't say another word. End of. You lot do what you want to do. I am like the dog whisperer of Essex. Um, and my dogs mean the world to me, they're like my kids. And I, I actually value dogs more than I do people. So stick me on an island with nine dogs and I'll be happy as Larry. Good boy. I've not eaten meat now for five months. It was sort of like a conscious decision that if I couldn't, if I couldn't kill it, I wouldn't eat it. On the island, however hungry I am, I couldn't kill anything. I don't care what you lot do, I will eat separately. We're gonna have to smack it in the head with a stick from long range, aren't we? And that may not knock it out. We'll oh, creep up behind and stab it in there. Where the organs are, inside the tummy. As soon as we creep up, it's gonna go, but that's, that's another option. I don't wanna stick it, I'd rather stab it in the heart, like straight away, then slit its throat. Since I got here, I've lost two stone. And boy, do I want some pork scratchings right now. I'm gonna keep really simple and ask a series of questions and just show hands, no words, okay? With the appearance of the pig causing tensions in camp, James calls a group meeting. Who is prepared to slit the pig's throat? That's one. OK, who's prepared to cook the pig? I'll do a bad job, but I'll give it a go. Two prepared to cook it. OK, the other last question. If Ojo is happy to do that, his fear is he's going to feel ostracised for doing it. I know there's a few, obviously, objectors in the group. Feeds very quiet in the corner. I'm not a reality TV star who, as long as their hair looks good and teeth are shiny, they'll get work. I'm a professional athlete. I need to be strong. I need a decent amount of protein. I'm not going to go and risk another injury just because a few guys didn't want to eat a pig. If you need it to survive, do what you've got to do. If you don't need it to survive, then I don't see the point. Question to you then, Pete. How long is that neck going to last? Don't know. That's what I mean. Don't know. I'm just as hungry as everyone else, but it's just not, a, not something that I can be a part of, and if I can prevent it, then I will do so. 
I think we should leave it like this, right? I'm more than happy to let it go now. If in five days' time that net breaks and we're all starving, I would do it for the team, but I'm not gonna do it for a laugh. Trust me, guys, I'm not bloodthirsty. I'm happy to crack on. Pete's quite a, a forceful little spirit. It's all about the food with Pete. It's the fishing and it's the animals and all that. And he has really strong opinions. I wouldn't want to argue with Pete. Piggy, 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 piggy. Hi. Two hours ago, a pig appeared on the beach. Now it's inching closer to camp in search of food. Colin. Look. Colin. Smell that. Come on, you've got a big nose. This way. I think I took it upon myself to name Colin, mainly because I thought, if we name him, it'd be like having an island pet pig. And no one wants to kill the pet pig. Pete gave him the name in a, in a way to protect him. He's a lot cleverer than what you expect him to be. Sometimes it feels good to get out of camp. Leaving the pig behind, Anthony and Joe have headed to the lagoon to set overnight traps for Stingray. We'll make a Stingray breakfast. Oh, some Stingray steak sounds bloody lovely. I've ensured that the island has enough wildlife and vegetation to keep them alive throughout, but only if they have the ingenuity to find it, catch it, and kill it. I really want to get a good win and really provide for the guys. I've, I've helped contribute quite a lot, but haven't really provided anything. In my life, I feel very much like a provider. My dad left, left home when I was about four. My granddad said to me that I was now the man of the house. Four years old. Aww. And do you know what? I mean, I took that so literally. As a young boy, 12 years old, I had a dream to represent my country in the Olympic Games, and I was lucky enough to, to do so. Being a boxer, you, you're always like pushing yourself to the limits. People die in boxing rings. It, it's, it's that severe, it's that serious in the boxing ring, you're by yourself. I'm looking forward to being part of a team. I want to see it through to the end. And I want to help as many people see it through with me. But if I'm a stingray, right, it's two and a beer, and I go to myself, I go, oh, look, there's a fish head. I'll have some of that. Bosh, bites it, hook in his chops. He can't swim, he can't swim. I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Today will be my vengeance, today, I'll catch a stingray or two. I believe I will. I know I will. I'll bring some back for the guys, and that'll be a great way to start any day on this island. While Anthony and Joe set their traps, Salia is taking a break from camp to pray. You know, I asked for us all to get through this intact. It, I ask to look after everyone, and I ask for strength. I work for The One Show as a, a reporter, and I've presented for Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. As an A&E doctor, I'm faced with the fragility of life, how precious our health is. You never know when it might all be taken away from you. Being in a place where help is not that readily available, and you've got to rely on your own clinical skills and your knowledge. That's a good opportunity for you as a medic to see if you can make it. I do fast during Ramadan. At least you get to feast at the end of the day. The last few days have been tough. They've pushed everyone. I think people are hungry, and it's all rising to the surface at the moment. Mm. What's your favourite war film? Anthony and Eric try and take their minds off their hunger by discussing a subject other than food. 
Saving Private Ryan does everything you want a movie to do for you. It, yeah. it makes you it makes you sentimental and an epic, classic, perfect movie about war. When he when he says to his wife at the end, like tell me I've lived a good life. Oh no. It chokes me up. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing movie. Favorite love film. Pretty woman. It's gotta be one of the one of, one of everybody's ten best favorite films. Every walk of life. Yeah. No, yeah. Every it, generation. Every generation. That movie works on every level. I hate to sound biased, because of my sister. I mean, Gear's a great actor. Good guy, good actor. He's good in that movie, blah, blah, blah. But my sister. Stole the show. Oh, my God. She was perfect. Oh my god, I can't explain how much I could do with a nice breakfast. I feel as weak as a kitten. Before sunrise the next morning, with the rest of the camp still sleeping, Anthony sets off to check his traps for Stingray. Well, he laid three traps. And, uh, oh no, they just didn't fancy it. really thought I would take in a couple of stingrays back for the camp. Oh. Almost feel worse now than I did before. Deflated from being unsuccessful, I think. Oh my God, he's in the camp. As Salia carries out her daily medical checks, an unwelcome visitor has reappeared. He wants you to become a veterinarian, Doc. Not near my clinic, bugger off. Go away, piggy. Oh, he's pissing over there, look. Oh, go away. I'm trying to keep everyone upright and fight infection, and it's wandering around, urinating and pooing everywhere. It's upsetting Sal. Yeah, it is, actually. To be honest, if, if Sal doesn't want him here, then that's, that's enough reason not to have him here. What if someone did want to kill him now? What would you say, Pete? I would point blank, I would stop them doing it now. We had the conversation, you had the opportunity. People decided not to. Now, you can't just kill him because he's annoying. Say there's no fish over the next two days. Say there's not. What do you say, then? You've got a week left and you should be absolutely fine because you've eaten more than enough to be here. The energy's not good for Colin at the minute, so I think he'll be happier in a... His feng shui is not quite yeah, right. Yeah, you know, obviously there'll be some parts of the island where he'll probably be more wanted than he currently is here. Concerned that Colin the pig could end up as a group's next meal, Pete decides to lead it away to another part of the island, accompanied by his right-hand man, James. Colin's about to make grown men look fucking ridiculous. Good on him. We'll tempt him with coconut, little tap on the rump if he gets stuck, and... It's about a 15 minute walk, 10 minute walk. I imagine it's going to take a couple of hours with Colin, though. Looking for Piggy. They do speak Spanish here, don't they? Here he is. He's answering me. He's actually answered me. <laughs> Maybe you can speak the language. Yeah, there he is. Look what I've got, Colin. Wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. That's it, that's it. Got him. Good stuff. Colin. There you go. Come on. OK, all right. There we go. Walk down. Walkies. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Good boy, follow me. You're such a good boy. You are daddy's little piggy. Come on, Colin, you're my man. 
You the man. Pete has been very good at connecting with everyone on the camp, but he showed a unique skill in talking to Colin the pig at his level. Now, I know people are going to say dolphins and pigs are the most intelligent animals besides humans. I, on the other hand, think Pete is basically on the same level as a pig. Colin, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. His highlight of, of his experience on the island, this is Pete, is taking the pig for a walk, which, for somebody I feel has got pretty close to Pete, I felt a bit usurped, to be honest. The pig will be back. Um, the pigs are not stupid. He liked us. He liked our habitat. He'll be back. Oi, uh, crackers. We need to get out on these fish now. The tide's so high, then it's gone. For fuck's sake. Having spent over two hours leading the pig away from camp, Pete and James have missed low tide, their only window to check for fish in the nets. To get the fish, you're probably looking at 15 foot down. We just left it a bit late. For fuck's sake. Just needed to be here quicker. As extreme hunger kicks in and energy levels drop, it's so easy to take your eye off the ball. Not only have the group missed their only chance of getting fish today, but by saving the pig, they've made a potentially huge survival error, walking away from a valuable food source. Martin, how many fish? The net's too deep down to get any fish out of it. You know, it's too low. But, but there are fish, huh? There's fish in there, but it's just too deep down. Well, the way we've secured the net, it's literally bang on perfect where we left it. It's just the tide's so high. So hopefully, if we get time, depending on the dark, it's just a timing thing. We rely on the nets 100%. Now we are a pescatarian camp. We decided just to live on the fish. But that means, with one source of food, that net is our lifeline. We've got no dinner tonight because we were taking Colin the bloody pig away from camp. Colin does not know how lucky he is. OK, here we are at Glastonbury. Uh, we've just seen the last band. It's been raining all night and all day. Kings of Leon are on next. Ah, oh, the atmosphere is great. We're all rocking. <laughs> Overnight, a tropical storm has ripped through camp. Island cook Joe is preparing the last remaining papaya to be shared amongst the group. It's pretty tough out here, and it's like making food out of nothing, really. Just want an avocado. Absolutely craving an avocado and a poached egg. You don't talk about life anymore. You don't talk about each other's stories. You're talking about food. Yeah, pig again. Oh, my God. I can't believe he's back already. <laughs> Yesterday, Pete led the pig deep into the jungle, but it has already found its way back to camp. Why is it feeding it and bringing it in? Because it, it smells, it smells, it smells food. To be honest, it's a sign of how we live. As the days go by, we're becoming less hygienic and more people living in a dump. So our boundary of cleanliness closes in and Colin then closes in on the stuff we leave behind. I think it's unhygienic when we're already in unhygienic conditions. It will be pooing all over the place. Well, that's an issue. Mm. What can I do? I think you can start to do it, Steve. Crackers. In fact, I'll do it. Fuck's sake. Yesterday, Pete and James spent several hours walking the pig away from camp and missed low tide. Their only opportunity to check the net for fish. Now the net has become tangled in the storm. 
What the fuck I'm doing with this knot here? This is our one net. We had the conversation about the pig. Yes. And you're saying this net will last three weeks or two weeks. And I was going, I don't think it will. And we now have the pig lying there asleep. And any one of us go up and kill it right now. Well, we've named him, I've walked him, we're not killing the pig. And yet we're, we're detangling a net. Pete has led the charge of fish, he doesn't eat meat at home. So he knows he, need, he needs food, he knows the cat needs food. There's pressure on him to come up trumps. You say this and get it straight back out tomorrow and we'll be cooking again. If I was a meat eater, I think I might have fought for my right to eat that pig. Frustrated by his failure to provide food for the group, and with pork and fish off the menu, Anthony has headed out into the jungle again, this time on a solo hunt. I feel like my legs are shackled, and every footstep I'm carrying a big boulder behind me. I work so hard and sacrifice so much and give it everything, yet I never seem to get what I feel like I deserve. I haven't got my wind. I go out on my on my hunt and so far I've brought nothing back. Is that a pig? I heard a pig snort. Definitely, it's quite an unmistakable sound. Um so <laughs> like that. James looks tired. The entire camp is suffering from the effects of the lack of food, but James is suffering more than most. Crackers is not overly happy today. He's just a bit down and he's a bit fed up with things, I think. He doesn't feel so great. He is tired, he looks drained. We've hammered it. Survival is about a lot more than just hard work. The mental strains of intense hunger in such a harsh environment can be tough. Despite his best efforts, the failure to catch any fish and the divisions in camp over what to do with a pig have taken their toll on James. Just for today, give yourself a chance, because you ain't going to fix otherwise. I've had the shit since day two, and we're now on day a lot more than two. My old coach used to say to me to jump high, you have to bend low, and there's no doubt that we're all finding our low points now, and it's how you respond to it. I'm looking at you, and physically, I can see that you don't look great. I just want to get out of camp. It's a tough place. It is a really tough place, and this is a battle of the environment, your hunger, and your mind. James does a brilliant job, right? But he wanders around like a prisoner of a war. You know, he's lost so much weight, and he's pushing himself to the edge. I just wonder, is James beating himself up about other things? I was cycling in America. I got smacked by a fuel truck going 70 miles an hour, and I was uh, put to a coma. You know, I was very difficult to live with. Yeah, it, was, it was definitely harder on the family than me. It took me a, a really long time to empathise with what they were going through. I think it's a perfect time on the island to reset some of the habits you've got into. I think it's going to be a really positive experience for me in terms of actually creating a relationship or relationships with people that actually I probably wouldn't have met or created relationships with previously. Thinking, OK, there's more to most people than you, you absolutely realise. OK, let's go 100 metres away where you know about. No, no, we're going to your spot. Unwilling to rest, and with wingman Pete occupied elsewhere, James recruits Eric to go on the search for firewood. So why are you so angry with me? I'm not, just let's just fucking go. Just stop talking about it. Let's go.
Every single one of us is unhappy. Every single one of us is cranky because we are so desperately hungry. James is not a gentle giant. You need to have some place in your mind to fall back on and just think, right, I'm going to get through this. I can get through this. I will get through this. And if that place isn't there, then you're, you're going to struggle. And I'm, I struggle for the first bit of every day. Definitely. Too late. Well, we can go that way. We'll bring the wood back over the top. Too, too much work. Come on. Well, we can go up here then. What? Why don't we go over the rock there then? I'm not really interested. Too much work with the wood. That's too hard. Coming around be easy. Coming out is too hard. Will will I get it at the next low tide? When we walk over the mountain together, down the beach, we can get it ready, we can bring it halfway back. I don't think I can physically do it, James. I, 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 I know I can physically walk around. I don't know if I can physically walk over. There's only one little hill on the way up, so... No, James, I, I was looking at it. OK. He's been a bit... a bit cantankerous. He yelled at me today. Slowly does it. Before they return to camp empty-handed, Eric forces James to take a break so that they can clear the air. One of the things coming on here I was, I was worried about was that I would get frustrated and blow up. And I, I, I know I've blown up a few times here, but that's one thing I wanted to control. And also, some of the things I'm really lucky to have, I take for granted. What I'm struggling with is missing home. I miss the kids enormously. I want to have a conversation with my wife that I probably haven't had and should have had over the last five years. Now, I don't know how she stuck with me for a few years and the way I was behaving after my accident, and I'm definitely different to the person she married. I just want to tell her that some of the reasons I've had for the way I've approached life have been excuses rather than reasons. The group gather for their morning meeting to discuss the food situation and the reappearance of the pig in camp. Last night was the first time I thought I might leave, mm. and it's nothing to do with the conditions. Because of the pig? Mm. What can we do? I don't know. What, what can we do? We... I don't know. I just need mm. not to be here. Or I don't need to be here. Well, and that okay, that. that's, that's not an option, you not being here. Living with a pig, it's so against what I am. I'm a Muslim, my faith is very important to me. I cover my hair, I pray five times a day, I fast. Religiously, we consider them unclean. The only suggestion we've got is either having to tie it up somewhere, which uh, is, is a bit cruel, depending on, because we don't have the right stuff to tie it in case it gets tangled and strangled itself, or we walk it away in a different, a different place. There's a big, thick bit of rope down that beach and then tie it up and then you can take it somewhere later. All right. That's sorted then. I'm really battling against some very, very core fundamental beliefs. Even the most lapsed Muslims, they'll, they'll probably drink alcohol, whatever. But there's one thing they don't do is eat a fucking bacon sandwich in the morning. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. For now, we can just tie him over here somewhere on a short rope. I'd love some bacon right now. But that, that ship has sailed. As much as I want to do that, I don't want to upset Pete or Sally. This pig is potentially a massive source of protein and fat. In survival, when it comes to food, there really is little room for sentiment. Their decision not to eat the pig, with the fishing net failing, could become a catastrophic error. We 
need some vegetation. We need some carbohydrates desperately. With Pete taking care of the pig and the food situation now critical, James teams up with Anthony to go on a hunt for yucca. And up there and then up to the left, but I'll cross that ravine and then head up. I am a very positive person. That's why I go out every single day and think, yeah, today's the day. Today's the day where I'll get something big. I give it my all and I just, you know what, just keep plugging away. If we don't get it, then we're, everyone's going to be in such a bad state tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Everything tries to fucking trip you up. It could be anywhere. All we have to do is keep looking. Man, it's hard to find. Really hard to find. To be honest, I'm, I'm pretty tempted to go back. Fuck me, hang on. Straight ahead. Oh yeah, get down on your knees and pray to Zod. That. What, how, how similar is that? Yucca. Oh, beauty. That is awesome. It should be easy to dig up. Amazing, that's dinner, that is dinner. Colin lives to fight another day. I don't like that noise. Less than an hour ago, the group decided to move the pig away from camp and Pete tied it up at the other end of the beach. What's wrong with him? Fucking hell. Colin, come on. Colin. Shit. Fuck. Guys, I think it strangled itself. What's well, it's dead. My fault. This is not the outcome. Worried about Pete now, I don't know where Pete is. I'm not going to talk about it, I'm just going to sit with you. Come on, let me sit with you. You can't go now. You've just got a few days to go. Please, please stay. You know it's an accident. I tied it up. And that's dead. It was still an accident. He is heartbroken. Just heartbroken. He wants to go. It's not your fault. No. Oh. <laughs> Sally, it's not your fault, so. Right? Earlier today, Pete tied up the pig at the end of the beach, and now it has accidentally strangled itself on the rope. Like, religion's religion, it's your views, and you stand by that, and I applaud you for that. That ain't your fault, right? Tried to cut the tree branch off with a knife, but by that point it was a little bit too late, and, um, Died. You know, I spent my entire time on this island trying to make a point that we didn't have to do that, we didn't have to kill anything. We're all responsible for the death of the pig. Now, what happens to the pig now? Do you just bury him so he's died for nothing? Or do you use him? and eat him. Island Zill, Cragnell, and a go-go one. <laughs> <sighs> Unaware of the situation in camp, 
Anthony and James return with a bag full of yucca. The group's first food win in four days. You right, Pete? No, not really. What's the matter? Pog standing himself and died. Oh, fucking hell, sorry. Oh, fucking hell. OK, mate. Pete, you all right? The pig strangled itself and died. Oh. I covered it in palm leaves. Yeah, it's bury it, aren't it? Bury it or eat it. Hmm? Bury it or eat it. Bang! We had it. I had images in my head. The guys would write a song for us. They'd engrave our names in the trees. We'd come back to a hero's, a hero's welcome. Meh, not so much. OK, James, take it away. If the group want to eat the pig, they need to make a decision quickly. Otherwise, the meat will spoil. While Pete maintains a vigil, the rest of the group gather to discuss their options. A simple question now of... We're going to bury it in the jungle and let the, the jungle eat it. There's enough living things out here that we'll just devour without going to waste, or... Are we going to skin it, gut it, and eat it? Who, if the, if the pig is on a plate, will eat it? Yeah, I'll eat it. I'd eat it. If it was cooking on the grill and someone asked me if I wanted some, if I said no, I'd be lying to myself. See, I don't eat meat. Even though I won't have anything to do with it, I do think those who want to eat it should eat it because it's an animal, it's dead, and, of course, you should eat it and not waste it. If you're going to butcher it, you need to hurry up and do it. So why don't we take it up on the rocks so all the excess can wash away? Pete's here now, Pete's here now. Hi, right, Pete. I came in to try prove that I was different to what most people thought. I don't know why I'm going to do it. I just thought that my whole time was fine. I said, fuck, I made decisions to try to pick up. Because I knew it was wrong to sleep with him. And it's dead. So, I stay in, and everyone eat and shit. Let me not stay in, and stay in the dungeon, be it in the pit. I spent more time with, with Pete than, than any other person on the island. He not only has his views, but he explains them well. He done everything he could to preserve the pig's life. He's the last person who should hold some blame. I felt really bad for him. Oh, Pete, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll butt in, mate. Um, it was a group decision. So please don't feel like you've killed the pig because, honestly, mate, it's not, it's not that way. And hopefully in time you can kind of come to realise that. But please stay because um, you, mate, you're too invaluable. You're too invaluable to go. I really, really, really want to eat the pig, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm more respectful than that and I'm not as selfish as that and I don't want to upset you any more pigs, obviously you're already upset, so I, I say we bur I bury, bury the pig. Okay. No, we give it a good send off. This is nobody's fault. We are the Magnificent Seven. Yay! Come on! Come on! Come on! <laughs> I think Pete is much kinder in his point of view towards animals than he is towards people. I couldn't eat his pig because then I'd be somebody who ate Pete's pig. I felt like using, using him as a food source would be disrespectful based on what had happened, so... I said my piece and, and thankfully the group agreed. Have you got one? Yeah. I've got one. Ready? Come on, let's go. Rather than eat the pig, the islanders agree to help Pete to bury it at sea. Take it easy. 
Oh, 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 shit. Oh, All right, man. Sorry, dude. Oh. Mate. Okay. Sweet yourself out. Looking good. It was hard for anyone who was prepared to eat the pig to watch it floating out on a funeral pyre. It's a pig. It's, it's a pig. If I get that send off and I go, I'll take that. Well, we just got to hope he, that he doesn't turn up tomorrow morning, you know, back on the tide. I can't quite believe that we threw away a, a dead pig that could have been eaten. And now we're back on hoping that there's more than one fish in there today. It's fuck all, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Next time on the island. We haven't got any dinner. It's not a disaster. It's almost becoming um, a dictatorship here. I've just asked you for it, and you don't know where it is. So, so it does OK, who? I don't know. Pete is cracking. Oh, my God, my finger! Oh, my God, my finger!